In this video, let us study the grey matter of the spinal cord. In a section of spinal cord, while the outer layer is formed by white matter, the central core is formed by the grey matter which is arranged around the central canal. Grey matter is a complex mixture of neuronal soma, neurites, synapses along with the supporting neuroglial cells and the blood vessels. The grey matter of spinal cord is made up of multipolar neurons. However, their size varies. Smallest neurons are proprio-spinal. Their fibers span the same segment or at best adjacent segments. They are involved in reflex activity or they form the interneurons connecting the descending fibers with the motor neurons. Medium-sized neurons are found in most regions of the grey matter except for substantia gelatinosa. These cells receive the primary afferents coming from the dorsal root and they send the ascending fibers forming the ascending tract. The largest neurons are the alpha motor neurons. Scattered amongst them is slightly smaller gamma motor neurons. Both these are found in the ventral horn and they supply extrafusal and intrafusal fibers in the skeletal muscle. On the medial aspect of the ventral horn, we also find Renshaw cells, which are basically the interneurons that exert tonic inhibition of alpha motor cells. Neurons in the grey matter of spinal cord can also be classified based upon the length of the axon into Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2 neurons. Golgi type 1 neurons will send their fibers as efferent fibers going through the ventral roots or they send their fibers as the ascending tracts. Whereas Golgi type 2 cells have their axons restricted to intersegmental or intrasegmental distribution within the grey matter of the spinal cord. Grey matter of the spinal cord is described to be having an edge shape or a butterfly shaped in a section or it resembles a fluted column in three dimensions. In a section it shows a ventrolateral extension called as ventral horn. This, the, this does not extend all the way to the surface and a dorsolateral extension called as dorsal horn which extends almost to the surface and in the thoracic segments and upper one or two lumbar segments, we also find a lateral horn. The right and left halves of the grey matter are connected by grey commissure, which is located around the central canal. Dorsal horn cells receive the primary afferents coming through the dorsal root. These either form interneurons or they form the cells which will project the ascending tracts. The ventral horn is made up of predominantly motor neurons, both alpha and gamma types, and they send the efferent fibers through the ventral roots. The lateral horn, on the contrary, is made up of the visceromotor and viscerosensory neurons, both of sympathetic as well as parasympathetic system. The dorsal horn is also described to be having different parts. From dorsal to ventral aspect, they are apex, head, neck, and a base. The apex is separated from the surface by a thin sheet of white matter which is called as dorsolateral tract of Lissor. The do dorsal root fibers when they reach the spinal cord they ascend up or descend down for a few segments in this dorsolateral tract of Lissor before they enter the spinal cord grey matter and end on a end by synapsing with one of the neurons there. Let us see how the section of the spinal cord is drawn. You can practice this diagram. As we know, the cells in the grey matter are arranged in four functional columns in case of spinal cord. The dorsal horn has somatic sensory neurons that is general somatic afferent functional column. The intermediate region has a visceral sensory and a visceral motor neurons that is 
general visceral afferent and general visceral efferent columns. This is present only in the thoracic and upper lumbar as well as in second, third and fourth sacral segments only. The ventral horn is made up of somatic motor neurons or otherwise called as somatic efferent functional column. The cells in the grey matter are described to be arranged as multiple longitudinal columns of cell groups which are described as nuclei or they are described to be arranged in 10 layers arranged from back to front numbered from 1 to 10 which are known as rexets laminae. Let us study how the cells are arranged in rexets laminae here. The dorsalmost part is occupied by dorsolateral tract of the lessor. Just inside that lamina 1, 2, 3 and 4 they occupy the head region of the dorsal horn. These receive cutaneous afferents. They form the site of reflexes as well as they have cells which will give rise to few of the ascending tracts. Lamina 1 has reticular arrangement of cells and fibers. Lamina 2 on the contrary is densely packed with small cells and receives most of the unmyelinated fibers. Lamina 3 is made up of larger neurons and it receives mostly myelinated fibers. Lamina 4 is a heterogeneous mix of different sized cells. Lamina 5 and 6 occupy the neck and the base region of the dorsal horn. These receive proprioceptive afferents through the dorsal roots. They also receive collateral branches from the corticospinal projections. So based upon their connections, they seem to be involved in regulation of movements. Lamina 7 is occupying the intermediate horn region. It has rich connection with midbrain and cerebellum through spinocerebellar tracts, spinotectal tracts or descending tectospinal, rubrospinal tracts. It's involved in posture and movement and in case of thoracic and second, third and fourth sacral segments, it is also involved in autonomic functions. Lamina 8 occupies the ventral horn. It spans the entire breadth of the uh, ventral horn in case of thoracic segments. But wherever there is limb enlargement, usually the lamina 8 is pushed towards the medial half. It is mainly a mass of proprio-spinal neurons, which are actually interneurons. They receive inputs from various adjacent laminae, also from contralateral lamina 8. They influence motor neurons, either alpha motor neurons or the muscle spindle through the gamma fibers. Lamina 9 is much larger wherever there is limb enlargement. This again occupies the ventral horn. It contains both alpha and gamma motor neurons and they supply intra and extrafusal fibers of the skeletal muscle. Lamina 10 is arranged around the central canal which where it occupies the central grey commissure region. So 1 to 10 laminae are arranged from dorsal to ventral aspect and the lamina 10 of course is arranged around the central canal. Now let us see how this gets classified into corresponding neuronal cell groups. Start with the dorsolateral tract of Lissor. The lamina 1 corresponds to a group of cells which is called as lamina marginalis. Again as we said this is made up of reticular arrangement of cells and nerve fibers. Lamina 2 and most of the lamina 3 form what is called as substantia gelatinosa of Rolando. This is a cell column which extends the entire length of spinal cord. Remaining part of lamina 3 and lamina 4 form the ill-defined nucleus proprius which again extends the whole length of spinal cord. Lamina 5 and 6 do not have a known named nuclear group but lamina 7 is made up of four nuclei Clark's column, visceral gray, intermedio medial and intermedio lateral nuclei. All these four nuclei are found in T1 to L1 or L2 segments. The visceral gray, intermedio medial and intermedio lateral are also found in second, third and fourth sacral segments. Lamina 7 and lamina 8 
sorry lamina 8 and lamina 9 occupy the ventral gray horn for neuronal cell grouping the ventral gray horn is divided into three parts a medial part a central part and a lateral part medial part has a ventromedial nucleus which extends the whole length and a dorsomedial nucleus which extends the thoracic and upper lumbar segments the lateral part has three nuclei ventrolateral dorsolateral and retrodorsolateral all these three nuclear groups extend wherever we have the limb enlargements that is cervical enlargement and lumbar enlargements central group of nuclei again is a discontinuous column it is found in the upper uh, cervical segments or in the lumbosacral segments let us see what their functions are of course the lamina 10 is arranged around the central canal let us see the function of the ventral group nuclei the ventromedial nucleus supplies the apaxial muscles whereas dorsomedial supplies the hypaxial muscles of the trunk apaxial muscles of the trunk are the back muscles including erector spinae hypaxial muscles are the ventral group muscles that is intercostals and anterior abdominal wall muscles coming to the lateral group the ventrodorsal nucleus uh, ventrolateral nucleus supplies intrinsic muscles of shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle it also has an onofs nucleus in the lumbosacral region which supplies the perineal muscles it supplies also the muscles of arm and the thigh the dorsolateral will supply the intrinsic muscles of the limbs mainly those in the region of forearm and leg the retrodorsolateral nucleus will supply the muscles of hand and the foot the central group on the contrary has the nuclei both in the cervical segment and in the lumbosacral segment in the cervical segment it forms the phrenic nucleus supplying diaphragm and the spinal accessory nucleus supplying trapezius muscle and sternocleidomastoid muscle in the lumbosacral region it forms a lumbosacral nucleus whose function at this point of time we have no idea about the dorsal root afferents when they reach the spinal cord based upon the size of the fibers they carry they segregate into two streams the medial stream is made up of large and medium sized fibers the largest fibers reach the dorsal column whereas other synapse in laminae 2 3 and 4 the lateral fibers are basically made up of a delta and c fibers they either ascend or descend in the dorsolateral tract of lesor for a few segments before they synapse with neurons in the lamina marginalis that is lamina 1 or in the substantia gelatinosa that is lamina 2 so why are we supposed to learn about these laminae or nuclear groups this will give us an idea as to where do the fibers which are forming a particular tract are originating from like in this case the anterolateral pathway fibers originate from lamina 1 then 4 5 6 7 and 8 similarly the nuclear group that is clark's column or corresponding lamina 7 will send the fibers into spinocerebellar pathway or the visceral visceral gray as well as the intermedio medial and intermedio lateral nuclei are involved in visceral sensations and visceromotor supply whether it is sympathetic or parasympathetic thank you hope you enjoyed this video happy learning you can visit this site for other videos